Hi, I'm Princess Jana of Estonia, a tiny kingdom somewhere in Europe. My parents, <laughs> the king and queen of Estonia, always made sure I had everything except freedom. I couldn't go anywhere without someone watching me, and I hated that. All I wanted to do was experience life like a normal teen, and that chance finally came on my 17th birthday, when they surprised me with a trip to the Maldives. But as they say, be careful what you wish for. The private jet waited as our limo pulled up. My best friend Emma, my boyfriend Sebastian and I got out of the limo and walked to the plane. Mr. Boris, my bodyguard, pulled our suitcases. OMG! I can't believe this is real! Somebody pinch me! Sebastian pinched Emma playfully and they laughed. <laughs> I liked that they got along. It's just a private jet, Em. My dad owns like three of them. Show off! <laughs> <laughs> Emma was my only friend. She'd been picked by my mother and introduced to me on my fifth birthday. My mother had called her my birthday present. Crazy, I know. Sebastian, on the other hand, was the son of a wealthy businessman, and we met when his family visited the palace. Do you guys want to go bungee jumping? I've always wanted to try it. Bungee jumping? Are you insane? The queen will never approve it. She doesn't need to know. Seb, what do you think? You can go, Jana. We'll cover for you with Mr. Boris. We are good at keeping secrets, right, Em? Yeah, totally. A few hours later, I stood at a huge bridge as I eagerly awaited my turn to jump. Just then, I spotted a cute guy carrying some jumping gear and figured he worked there. Hello, I'm Jana. You work here, right? It's my first time doing, well, anything. So I guess we'll need to be strapped together for my jump? Hmm, sure. You can strap yourself to me any day. My name is Nicholas, by the way. What a flirt! Anyway, as I was busy blushing, he squatted and strapped my ankle to his. Um, I know we just met, but you're going to have to hug me for this one. I mean, I knew it was for the jump. Why was my heart beating so fast? Without thinking too much, I wrapped my hands around him and closed my eyes. Ready? Yes! Here we go! Hold on tight! And that is exactly what I did. When we jumped, I squealed all the way through while he laughed. It was the most exhilarating experience of my life. After my adventure, I sneaked back into the hotel excited to tell Sebastian and Emma all about it, but they were not in the room, so I went looking for them. A few minutes later, I spotted them lounging by our suite's private pool and was about to open the door when I heard Emma mention my name. I'm so sick of Jonna. If I hear her complain one more time about not being able to live a normal life, my ears will bleed. Right, and I'm only dating her because the king requested my dad that I do it as a favor to him. Wait, what? I thought you were into her. No way, I can't even stand her. Besides, you're way hotter than her. I think you're hot too. You can do way better than her entitled highness. I watched in shock as Sebastian moved towards Emma and kissed her. Enraged, I stormed into view and they jumped apart. Are you freaking kidding me? How could you do this to me? And how could you say all those awful things about me? Well, everything you just heard, it's all true. We can't stand you. She wasn't even sorry. And it's not my fault that Seb likes me better than a whiny little brat like you. I was so mad I lunged at her and we fell into the pool. A whiny brat? How dare you? <sighs> Let me go! Whoa, ladies. Let's all calm down and talk about this, please. There's nothing to talk about. I'm done with both of you. I got out of the pool, angry, and as I walked away, I slipped and fell. Ow! As I lay there clutching my knee, Mr. Boris came rushing in. Jonna, what happened here? I caught them saying mean things about me, then they kissed and I- Please, take a deep breath. Everything will be fine, darling. But right now, we have to go back home, so your personal doctor can check your knee. As he carried me out of there, I felt safe like everything would be okay. Mr. Boris always made me feel this way. He was more of a father to me than the king. Thank you for always being there for me, Mr. Boris. When we arrived back home, Mr. Boris wheeled me into the living room. When my mother saw me, she got off her chair and rushed towards me. Jonna, what happened? Jonna went bungee jumping! We tried to stop her, but she didn't want to listen to us! Have you completely lost your mind? Mother, I- She tried to take us with her, but we refused. Sebastian and Emma really wanted me to get into trouble. How could you be so reckless? We trusted you this one time, but you failed. And you- 
How could you let her do that? You're so lucky I can't fire you! I followed her and watched her. She was not in any danger, your highness. What? I thought I was alone. You're never alone, my girl. Go to your room, now! Don't you mean my prison cell? As Mr. Boris pushed me out of the room, I couldn't help but wish that he was the king. A few days later, Mr. Boris and I were out on the lawn when he knelt next to me and handed me a necklace with a locket on it. What's this? It's my birthday gift to you. I'm sorry your trip didn't go as planned. Wow, thank you so much. It's beautiful. I'm never taking it off. As Mr. Boris helped me put on the necklace, we saw my mother walk towards us, a bunch of servants following her closely. Mother, is everything okay? Yes, Jana. I'm here to introduce you to your nurse. We hired him just a few minutes ago. Nurse? I don't need a nurse. My knee is much better and I- My words died in my throat when a familiar guy moved from behind the servants and stood right in front of me. Hello, princess. I'm Nicholas. It's a pleasure to meet you, for the first time ever. Clearly, Nicholas didn't want the queen to know we'd met before because she'd probably fire him. <laughs> On second thought, mom, I don't mind being pushed around and taken care of. I don't want to strain my knee too much. Very well, Jana. I'll see you later. And please do everything Nicholas asks. You heard her. This was going to be fun. A few minutes later, Nicholas pushed me down a paved path, and when we were far enough, I asked him what I'd been dying to ask. How are you here? Aren't you supposed to be in the Maldives? Because I live here. I was just in the Maldives for vacation. Why didn't you tell me you weren't the jumping instructor? You looked scared. So I figured I assist the damsel in distress. Whoa! There's no damsel in distress here! If you say so, princess. Whatever. Just wheel me back to my room now. I'm quite tired and I need to rest. Hmm. First day, you're already inviting me to your room. Fine! I'll just wheel myself! I wheeled myself away from Nicholas, and just when I rounded a corner, I saw Sebastian and Emma kissing in front of the palace fountain! I took out my phone and took a picture of them. When I got a chance, I'd use that against them. Disgusting! Careful! You might hurt your other leg and die of jealousy uh. altogether! And then, all of a sudden, when Emma noticed Nicholas, she threw herself at him like a groupie! Hi, handsome! I'm Emma. And you are? Not interested. As much as I was enjoying Emma's embarrassment, I noticed something much more interesting. The main gate was wide open, and without thinking, I took off. Hey, where are you going? Anywhere but here. I can't look at these two anymore. I expected him to stop me, <laughs> but to my surprise, he smiled. Okay, well, just wait here while I go get my car. As he walked away, I felt so excited. Nicholas was my ticket to freedom. Nicholas drove us to a movie theater, and when we arrived, he parked his car and took his shirt off. What are you doing? Relax, princess. It's not that kind of date. I'm just changing into regular clothes. I can't go to a movie in scrubs. Of course. Makes sense. Did you say date? I... I've never been on a date before. What about Mr. Casanova back there? I assume he was your boyfriend at some point? He was, but we never went out anywhere. Well, that's his loss. Let's go. They're showing a new horror movie. This should be fun. He was right. It was fun. For him, at least. I, on the other hand, screamed and covered my face so many times, much to Nicholas's amusement. After the movie, Nicholas pushed me out and was about to help me back in his car when I stopped him. Wait, will you do me one last favor? Oh god, please stop doing that. You look like you're having a seizure. I really thought I was being cute. Okay, okay. What do you want? I want to drive your car. Absolutely not. You're hurt. Just then, I stood up from my wheelchair, snapped the car keys from Nicholas, and climbed into the driver's seat. What the heck? You can walk? Yeah, my knee is all healed. It's a miracle. Now get in. Okay, so let me get this clear. You could walk this whole time. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> You're not mad? What? No. It's obvious you pretended just so you could keep me around. You like me. He was right, but there was no way I was going to admit it. Shut up! As soon as I stepped on the gas, the car jerked backwards and rammed right into a tree. Nick, are you okay? Yes, princess. I'm okay. I can't say the same for my car. I'm so sorry. My parents are gonna kill me. 
You're right. They are. Nick and I turn to see Mr. Boris standing there. Mr. Boris? Where did you come from? I found you through the mobile tracker on your phone. Of course my phone had a tracker. I wasn't even surprised anymore. Don't worry about the car. I've already called a tow company. I need to get you home now. I'm really sorry, Nick. As soon as we walked into the living room, my father walked towards us, angry. Boris, you were supposed to bring Jana back hours ago. And wait, you can walk? Your Majesty, the princess went to a movie, and I didn't want to interrupt because she looked happy for once. Are you saying that she's unhappy here? Yes, that's what I've been trying to say all this time. I even had to pretend just so I could spend time with Nicholas. You ungrateful girl! We should have never adopted you in the first place! Of all the things I expected her to say, that was not one of them. And as if summoned by the devil himself, Emma and Sebastian chose that moment to walk in. Oh, she walks! I knew it. She was faking it so she could keep that stupid nurse around. Shut up, both of you! Did you just say I'm adopted? What? This is too good. I knew all along you didn't have royal blood in you. You two need to get out! Don't talk to your friends like that! Friends? These two betrayed me and you didn't even bother to ask for my side of the story! Oh, honey, I'm sure it was a momentary lapse of judgment on their part. Seeing how <laughs> clueless my mother was, I fished out the picture I took of them earlier and showed it to her. See what my so-called friends have been doing right under my nose? She took one look at the photo and grabbed Emma by her ears. Is this what I paid you for? <laughs> I am so sorry, your highness! I Quiet! Both of you, get out! Emma was finally getting what she deserved. I couldn't take the tension anymore, so I stormed out. I thought my day couldn't get any crazier. Boy, was I wrong. After I stormed out, I went to the palace garden, and as I sat crying, Mr. Boris joined me. You look so much like your mother. You know, your real mother, I mean. You knew my mom? Yes, she was my wife. What? I, I don't understand. As I waited for Mr. Boris to explain, he reached into his pocket and took out a necklace that looked exactly like the one I was wearing. This belonged to your mom. The one you're wearing belongs to me. We had them made when you were born. This is a picture of you and your mom. But I don't understand. Why did you give me away? I had no choice. When you were born, your mother and I could barely provide for you. One day you became very ill, and I decided to seek help from the king and queen. Mr. Boris continued to explain that the king and his wife, who couldn't have children, agreed to help him on one condition that he let them adopt me. I only agreed as long as they allowed me to stay by your side. Your mother was so angry that she left us. I stared at the photo and sobbed. Mr. Boris was my dad. It all made sense now why he was always there for me, why I always felt a connection with him. Just then, our moment was interrupted by a blood-curdling scream. What was that? Hurry, let's go find out. We hurried to the front lawn and found Emma in a heated argument with an elderly couple wearing tattered clothes. Emma, dear, please don't be upset. We are so happy to see you. Who the heck are you? You're mistaking me for someone else. Emma, my daughter, I know you were just a small girl when we gave you to the queen, but you can't forget your parents. Emma tried to take Sebastian's hand, but he shoved her off him. Don't touch me. I don't want your poverty rubbing off on me. Security, come throw this trash out. Guards grabbed Emma and her parents, but before they could throw them out, I stopped them. Stop! I'll take it from here. Hi, I'm Jana. Please come with me. As soon as we walked into the queen's office, she screamed and took a step back. Who are these people? Are we being robbed? These are Emma's parents. You need to help them. And why would I do that? I already spend a lot on Emma's stay here. Besides, she's been busy messing around with your chosen suitor. I don't owe them anything. They need to leave now. How can you be so cruel? You just don't get it, Jana. If we helped every charity case that came to us, we'd have nothing. I can see now we made a poor selection when we adopted you for an heiress. You know what? You don't have to regret your selection anymore. I'm leaving the palace. Look. I know we probably have not been the most attentive parents, the king and I, but we have only wanted the best for you. 
Why would you want to leave us? Because even though Mr. Boris was just my chauffeur, he was more of a parent than you guys were. All you did was lock me up and set me up with people who didn't even genuinely like me. I want to be more myself. Be free to do whatever I want. I wasn't meant to be an heir. You said it yourself. The queen surprised me with a hug. I hardly expected it, but she had never hugged me like this all my life. Was she sad? I am so sorry I failed at being a mom to you, Jana. I was overprotective, and I didn't give you a chance. You're right. You deserve to be free, and your dad will take good care of you. Just promise you'll come visit us from time to time. Hmm? I will take good care of her, your highness, and make sure she visits. Thank you, Boris. You've always been kind. If you need anything, don't hesitate to call me. The queen kissed my cheek and left. I was still trying to process her reaction when Mr. Boris took my hand. Come on, honey. We have some packing to do. A few hours later, Mr. Boris and I drove to a cabin outside of town, and imagine my surprise when I saw Nicholas waiting. I was so excited, I ran up to him and hugged him. Nick! What are you doing here? Mr. Boris called me and asked me to meet you here. Thank you, Mr. Boris. Um, Dad, for everything. So, princess, are you ready for your new life? You know I'm not a princess anymore. You'll always be a princess to me. That's so corny, Nick. I felt a sense of peace, as I knew with Nicholas and my dad by my side, I would always be okay.